good to see so many from the new faces here, good to support. Not all my friends have been that supportive. I didn't tell one guy what I was doing. He said, you, doing stand-up? You're joking. I said, yeah, that's the plan, mate. That's, that's how we're doing. <laughs> um, it's extra special being in this iconic Sheffield venue. Um, it's where my now wife and I first got together. Yeah, so a real sliding door moment for me. I often wonder where I'd be had, had she not found me. Still, the wonders of Rihik now. Uh, I didn't think that drink tasted funny that night, to be fair. She's on the front row now, I don't know if you can tell in this light, but she's a 10, an absolute 10. On the fucking pH scale. Um, with, it being, um, with it being the run up to Christmas, she was, on, she was on eBay all day yesterday. If no one puts a bid in, I'll have to lower the asking price. Man. <laughs> It was her idea I, I took stand up, up actually. Uh, she, not because she thinks I'm particularly funny, she uh, wanted me to do something which didn't involve drinking so much. Now, I did put out to her that all these comedy evenings would be in licensed premises. And she went, well, you, you can always have an alcohol free bit. So that's a great plan. And then maybe on the way home, we'll swim by the brothel for a cuddle. Yeah? <laughs> um, she was right, though. I was, I was drinking too much. Um, I saw sort of help around the AA. They told me they were a roast and recovery service and we're going to have a the phone call. Um, she has helped me massively with my confidence. As soon as I get that anxious about doing this, but my jokes land on a funny enough. I don't really get any laughs. And when I'm at that, she whispers these three magic words that I need to hear. These three magic words that make me realise, of course I'm funny enough. Of course I'll get laughs. Those three magic words? Mrs. Brown's boys. Yeah? <laughs> and if people laugh at that, they will surely laugh at anything. Yeah? Um, they might be the three magic words, but there are two words she could say which make my blood run cold. Okay? Those two words are bottomless brunch. <laughs> Anyone ever been on one? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, they're dangerous things, aren't they? Um, if you don't know the premise of it, you pay a set rate like 25 quid and you get all back to eat limitless drinks. I've got a mate who used to have a good old fashioned Yorkshire thrift, he swears by it. Because he says, well, if you drink eight pints and having a bit of burger anywhere on a Saturday, so I may as well get the part of the deal. Fair enough, makes sense. But when my wife and her friends are going, them, weird things start happening, okay? They kind of reverse the aging process. Now, I don't mean in a good way. I don't mean that, like, the skin becomes softer, gravity is reversed, okay? <laughs> I mean, they start, they start the afternoon, Looking every inch kind of respectable ladies, okay, ladies want lunch, yeah? And I drop them off at the venue, yeah, they're all dressed up, it all looks, look, look, looks nice and sedate. I then go home, and I spend the time basically removing all means of aggravation for once you return. <laughs> right? Any furniture, any trip hazards put them to one side. It's a bit like, you know, after the meals at a wedding, Okay, and they have to clean everything away, make the dance floor available so all the drunken revelers can dance and hit it. Okay, it's kind of like that. Because then eventually my phone will ring. Okay, and that's the cue to pick her up. She ran once, and the name comes up, answers the phone, I said, hello. And she's crying, and she's in a good start. Okay, and she says, I've lost my phone. <laughs> I said, no, 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 you're on it now, it's in your hand. <laughs> And there's a pause, and then I hear a shout to her friends, How much for my phone? <laughs> so that's, that's my cue to pick them up. And by the time I pick them up, this is when they've regressed to kind of like rebellious teenagers. Some of them have taken up smoking, and <laughs> into it, um, swearing left, right, and centre. They're not wearing shoes. They've always taken their shoes off, right? And apparently, it's, just, it's hard to walk in heels. You walk perfectly fine those heels three hours ago. Okay? Before you threw two gallons of Prosecco down the right? um, So I, I, I tend to have the taxi driver, I take everyone home, and I get her home, and I'm guiding her to the door. And at an awkward moment, I've got to kind of let go of her and open the door and close it behind us. Um, so what I have to do is, it's a little bit like you're being tempted to You know, the, the kids when they have the ramp, you just kind of aim it down the middle and push. That's kind of what I do. Like, not, not with a proper ball in holes, like that. <laughs> That'd be a bit invasive given the circumstances. But I just kind of give a little nudge, okay? And um, thankfully we've got quite a narrow hallway as well, so it's like having the bumpers up as well in the bottom, okay? So she'll bounce, bounce, bounce. 
eventually she'll find her way to the kitchen, and that's where she like the best to be like a little baby. Because I have to help her undress, I have to get her drink of water, I'll lead her upstairs, I'll tuck her in, okay, so everything's gonna be okay. So now she's gone back to being a little infant. Bear in mind, as I said, this is the woman who wanted me to take up comedy because I was drinking too much. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, right, I assume that's about my five minutes. Okay, I've had a blast. It's great to see everybody here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Take care.